Hello and welcome back everyone. We are fast approaching the end of the year and that means that this is the final episode I will be doing on this channel in 2022. This is the third installment of the Radan Festival Diorama. Thank you very much for sticking with it this far. We have finally got here and this is how the final piece has come together. And engage in jolly cooperation. Ooh. Welcome back, everybody, to the final part of the Radan Festival. I hope you're now somewhat recovering from the manic festive period, because now we are going to be putting together the actual diorama. So to do this, I've got a standard blank piece of thin wood, which I'm going to start mapping everything out onto. And what my plan for this is basically try and create some dunes across this that they can sort of stand on as if it was like the wailing dunes in the battle arena. And to make some dunes, I went and purchased some of these, which are basically just little polystyrene blocks. And miraculously, they fit perfectly within the confides of the plank of wood. So we'll just grab some PVA glue. Give it a good firm press down. Now what I'm gonna be doing is cut and shape the dunes out of these blocks just by sort of cutting out pieces around here. Now we're going to be generating a fair bit of mess doing this. There's the first dune sort of cut up. Now what I'm going to do is I'll probably slice these in half to save us a bit of trouble. Okay, so there's all my polystyrene stuck on. It's looking a bit random and weird right now, but I'm going to start shaping them to size. Got this basic overall shape, doesn't look that great at the moment, but what I'm gonna be doing is go over it with some polyfiller to sort of fill in areas and smooth bits out. And we'll also sand these down so that they're like smooth rather than these sort of jagged linear edges. So this is just some basic ready mixed filler. All I'm gonna use it for, basically just plugging these gaps in and around here. Also, this stuff dries exceedingly well because it's meant to fill holes in walls. So it will actually keep the polystyrene pretty stuck down. It'll take about 24 hours to set. I might take my flags and such and just start sticking them in so then the actual plaster can help them dry a bit like that. And then some of these little weapons that I've got, I think I will actually sort of stick them into the ground as well. Because what I plan on doing is um, basically priming this whole thing black once it's been sanded down. Then I can paint these on top of that. A couple of these skeletons, I'm not gonna dot around all of these skeletons because I'm gonna be putting sand over the top, but it could be quite nice to have a couple that are quite deep rooted in the sand and some that are not so deep in it. We've got a couple of weapons left that we can lay around and a couple of skeletons left to lay around. But at the moment, it's looking pretty war-torn, which is ideal. And all we need to do is just let this dry for a day so I'm going to let it dry overnight. Now, it has indeed dried, probably here. Quite solid. So all I need to do is just go around these sort of edges and just smooth things out a bit. So I'm just going to go grab some sanding equipment. So I have here some grit level 120 and 180 sandpaper, because I feel like 120 might be a bit too coarse, but we'll give it a go. And a little sanding block. Yeah, see if we can just smooth them out a bit. So that's most of the grittiness sanded down. You know, it's not fully smooth, but that's okay because the main thing is just making sure it's tidy enough that there's gonna be no crazy sticky out parts when we apply the sand. And what I will do is I will prime this with some black, let that dry for a minute, and we'll come back with a fully primed arena to which we can start applying our sand to. Okay, so it is primed fully with some black, but I've come to find out that where I haven't fully coated areas in the polyfiller, the um, primer actually eats away at the polystyrene. So I've got these like little gaps forming around, which is a bit annoying, but in saying that, I'm going to take our a 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water, and I'm gonna take a large old brush and basically just coat all of the diorama with this mixture and we'll be ready to put our sand in. 
So I have a selection of sands and things to use. We have this sort of larger rock ballast stuff. We have fine sand. So I think for a big base coat, I'm gonna start with this heavy stuff. Start sprinkling it on. Okay, so that's a bunch of the big ballast added. Now that I should be able to successfully apply a whole layer of this sand all over. So as you can see, we're getting pretty good coverage at the moment over most parts, but we're not getting everything covered. So I think it will be a case of delicately going around some areas with just some pure PVA. And I'm just gonna get a thick coating of it, just because I think we probably needed that from the start, to be honest. But hey, we live and learn, don't we? Okay, so the sand is, it's finally dry and that took another day for it to dry fully. So it's like, you hear that? It's pretty rock solid now, which is good because no sand is really coming off of this thing, which is what we want. We want it nice and solidified together. So it looks kind of bland. So what my thinking is, is that I'm gonna airbrush on some shading onto the sand to make it look a bit more natural. I also, as you can probably see here, I added in some more skeletons around and some more weapons over the top. We've got like little, got little legs poking out of the ground and they're all nicely stuck down in place. So I think I'm in a good spot to start spraying things. Now, if I sound a bit tired, it will be because I've just recovered from the norovirus, which sort of put me out for a couple of days and it was not fun. I'm still not 100%, but I'm, I'm determined to finish this diorama. <laughs> So in an airbrush, I'm gonna load up a few different colors, but I'm gonna start with the shading. And I think to add some shading in, I'm gonna go with some catechin flesh. From a kind of low angle up, I'm gonna, so sort of like that, I'm gonna kind of spray this catechin flesh and hopefully I'm not gonna spray sand everywhere, but you know, we'll find out. And I'll just try and get the shadows in. Okay, so there's our update of it with some shading and I think it makes it look a lot better. I think it's really bringing it to life. And another thing I also did was, I'm assuming that the sunlight is coming like down and across like this. So I've also sprayed like shadows from where it will be emanating from the sort of terrain part. So we've got some like shadows coming down from the flags and sort of underneath each sword and obviously hitting around all the tucked in areas around, around the sort of undulating dunes is kind of my thought process behind this all. Next up, I'm going to be mixing in some Mornfang Brown because I'll just slightly move up a tone before I go into the actual sand color and then before I add in the highlights. Okay, so now that we've got the shadows done, I'm gonna move up into the sort of main tone, which will be using Xandri Dust, as this is like, I think the closest color to sand. But since this is going to be the sort of main light source, I'm going to be pointing it in the direction that the way the sun is will be facing. So it's going to be going like down and out like that. So if I have it at an angle like that, I shouldn't really be taking up too much of what I've done for the shadows. Yeah, it's coming along quite cool. So we'll do the last color, which will be some wraith bone. And that's going to do exactly the same as what I did with the Zandri dust, but I'm just going to do it in sort of smaller, higher up areas. I think that's looking pretty cool because we've got skeletons. Can you guess what we're using? Oh yeah, skeleton hold contrast paint. So I'm just gonna slap a load of this on our skelly friends. Skeletons done. I'm now gonna move on and just paint the weapons. And I'm just gonna do that with varying metallic colors that I have, alloy colors, silver metallic colors and gold metallic colors. Mix and match, see what looks good. Alrighty, so we have the weapons painted in. Probably tough to see, <laughs> but they're painted in. So the last thing of the terrain left to do is just paint the flags. And the flags I'm just gonna paint in different sort of banner colors. Um, I'm not gonna do anything too crazy with them because I spent so long on this diorama already. So I'm gonna do one in Leviathan blue contrast so we can get a nice vibrant blue banner. 
I'll probably do another in red. One red, one blue. Now I'm gonna do probably one in black. Wonderful. With the flags done, we're pretty much there. I did have an idea while painting that, which I'm gonna try out now. And that's to drop some blood around. And I think that's quite a good idea. I'm gonna see if I can kind of, I can kind of flick it. A tad too sticky. Maybe we'll try flicking some red contrast. So what I'll do is I'll just start adding some coagulated blood. I'm just gonna squeeze some blood directly in places so it's like little pools of blood. So that will take a little while to dry, but for now, there's our war-torn festival. So next step, getting the characters on. So for each of the characters, I've done this nifty little trick that someone told me about on one of the comments which is attach a little wire. You can see here, a little wire to their feet. And with that, basically it means I can glue the feet in, but when I pop this in, this will keep the statue in place while I'm gluing. So that is very nifty, very, very handy. Let's get these fellas in place first, and then we can put Radan in. And there's our boy Alexander in. Now Patches has to be somewhere far away from the action, so probably on the side here. And you go. Lionel, I think, would go up here. I think you'll fit in quite nicely there. Yeah. Damn, done the same to Lionel. Damn. Next, <laughs> Blythe. Quite like Blythe being on the side up here, actually. Uh, bloody finger, Akina. Oh, Alexander, you broke. Damn it. Okay, there's Akina. Tarnished, probably down here, I reckon. Okay, Tarnished is in. Lastly, before we fix <laughs> the other guys, we need Bibbidi Bobbidi Bonky Boy. Bibbidi Bobbidi Bonky Boy is gonna go up here. Yeah, I like that. And Lionel can go down here. Okay, this is tempt number two. Not feeling overly confident, to be honest. Yep, it's not working. We need a new plan of attack. Okay, so plan A didn't work. He was too big and the wires weren't keeping him in place and they were just snapping off. So plan B, what I've decided to do is I've marked out where Leonard's and Radan's feet stand and I've basically cut out holes into the polystyrene that he can just sort of like sink into and I'm just gonna fill them with some super duper glue and then sort of sink him in and then I'll just fill the top in with sand and then I'm sort of hoping that that in itself will keep him balanced. Here we go, just brush off this excess styrofoam that's worked its way on. Here we go, plan B in effect. Plenty of glue. Right, moment of truth. That's pretty good. I think the smart thing will be to prop something up so he doesn't start leaning backwards. I'm just gonna let that dry and then fingers crossed, once it's dried, we can finally take a look at how it looks. But from this angle, what I'm seeing is pretty cool. Please dry, I beg you. Well, my friends, I can safely say the glue has dried, the dust has settled, the sand is in place, the characters are safely secured. And here is the finished product. And would you look at this? Yes, this is a Christmas jumper. <laughs> Thank you very much for noticing. But if you look at this, it's just, I'm just, oh, I'm so happy it's complete. I'm just, above all else, I'm glad I finished it just so I don't have to spend any more time on it. Look at it, really thrilled with how it came out. I'm glad I kept it simple. I didn't overcomplicate it too much like I did with the Limgrave one. 
you know, with that, I feel like it didn't, it didn't hit the nuances that I wanted, but this, I feel like it's really hit the nuances of the Radan festival that I wanted it to. The fact that we have Radan focused in the center, we have all the characters that I wanted in, all placed exactly how I wanted them. I'm just really chuffed with how it's come out, to be honest. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope also that if you're looking to make your own similar sort of thing, that this gives you some sort of inspiration to go ahead and do it because, you know, I've never met, I've never made something like this before. What I probably will do in the near future, once all of the holiday festivities have died down, is I probably will buy a frame and I can just sort of, or like a plinth, and I can just sort of, you know, slot that on top of. But look, look how solid it is. Nothing's moving around. That is the Radan Festival. <laughs> Let's just give it a little spinneroo so you can get a good look at everyone. The only thing I would say is that, you know, the uh, only downside was using polystyrene would be the, when I primed it and it started eating away at the actual polystyrene itself and left sort of cracks around. But to be honest, overall, I don't think it's too much of an issue because once all the glue and everything, all the adhesive had dried, all the sand has stuck on like this. Like it's nice and solid and it's glued together. Nothing's coming off of it. Great. Really just kind of thrilled with how it's finally come out. And that about does it, to be honest. There's nothing left to do with this, but put it on my shelf. I'm gonna leave it there and I will see you guys in 2023. Peace out. And with that, that brings us to the end of the last episode of 2022. Thank you very much for everyone who has joined me this far in this journey. It's been a hell of a few months since we started this channel and it's grown a lot quicker than I had anticipated. So I just wanna thank each and every one of you for joining and subscribing and commenting, liking, sharing with other people. It means the absolute world that you've come along for this journey. <laughs> This is the very last model we've done for 2022 and I am pretty thrilled with how it's come about. It has taken a long time to get it done, much longer than I had anticipated, but I think it's turned out much better than I had thought and I'm pretty pleased that this is what we get to use to sign off the end of the year. So looking forward to 2023, we have a lot of really exciting projects coming up and I think a lot of things that you guys are going to be really excited by and hopefully you will really enjoy as we're putting a lot of work behind the scenes to get this stuff done. If you want to help the channel grow and succeed, there are ways in which you guys can help out. There are Facebook groups to which you can share these videos to. There are Discord servers where you can share the links of the videos to and share the channel and the pictures from the Instagram to. There are subreddits as well. Share with your friends, let people know, because we're really gonna be ramping things up for 2023. I just appreciate any kind of support that you guys give, so saying that, I'm gonna wrap up this video here and thank you once again for joining me. Building the Radan Festival diorama has been an absolute joy and I will see you all in 2023. Peace out gang and don't you dare go hollow. Cheers. It's really solid, I can do anything. Chuck it in the fire. <laughs>